a new and exciting game changing prompting technique that I stumbled upon and I highly recommend that you guys start playing around with and checking um, how this prompting technique uh, improves your own workflow and your prompt engineering. This video is going to be quite short. We are going to cover the research paper that was published by the team who did uh, this research about this method that is called chain of drafts. Uh, basically, um, it's an improvement of chain of thought, but we will dive into this right now. So those of you who have been following me or probably anyone who has clicked on this video knows already the difference between a simple prompt and chain of thought. But let me just uh, re-clarify. Re so basically, a simple prompt is just asking the LLM, the large language model, OpenAI, GPT, uh, or Claude, uh, Biantropic, to produce a certain output. This is a simple prompt. In opposing to a simple prompt or like an improvement of a system prompt is something that we've seen uh, emerge lately is a, a chain of thought prompt. In a chain of prompt, we ask the model to stick to uh, to think step by step about the question about the prompt, and more often than not, this yields a better result. The downsides of this is first of all latency; results uh, take more time to be to be produced, and uh, they cost more, so it's just more tokens. Uh, so uh, these are the most significant uh, downsides. Now, in this research paper what the team has done, they introduced a new type of prompting, which is called chain of drafts. Now they discussed a bit what is a chain of thought, as, as we said, it's a prompting strategy that demonstrated significant effectiveness across a wide range or, or range of tasks. However, LLMs uh, often produce excessively verbose reasoning steps, consuming a substantial number of tokens before arriving at the final answer, like I said. In contrast, humans tend to adopt a more concise approach when solving complex problems involving multi-step reasoning, such as a mathematical or logical puzzles. Rather than elaborating on every, on every detail like chain of thought, we typically jot down only the essential, like the outlines, the essential intermediate results, minimal drafts to facilitate the thought process. So inspired by this uh, natural tendency, um, what they did, they came up with the idea of the chain of thought. The approach of the chain of thought, uh, it, it aims to reduce verbosity by limiting the number of words used in, a reasoning in each reasoning steps, focusing only on the essential calculations or transformations needed to progress. Now, um, let me go to the experiment. Basically, what they did, they, used, they compared three different prompting techniques, the standard prompting, prompting um, the chain of thought, so this, the same type of prompt like in standard prompting, but in opposing to this, they ask it, um, they ask it to provide a step-by-step -step answer. And in the chain of draft, they ask the model to think step-by-step. -step. However, the model is asked to limit each reasoning step to five words at most. Now, note that they do not enforce such limitations in any way. It's just a general guideline to promote short reasoning steps for each few short example. Now, here are the system prompts. So, answer this, the question directly. Do not return any preamble, explanation, or reasoning. This is a standard prompt. Then we have the chain of thought. Think step by step to answer the following question. Return the answer at the end of the response after a separator. And the chain of draft is think step by step, but only keep a minimum draft for each thinking step with five words at most. Return the answer at the end of the response after a separator. Now uh, they did some uh, tests with arithmetic reasoning. These were the results. So as you can see here with GPT-40 model and with Cloud 3.5 Sonnet, this is the accuracy, this is the amount of tokens, and this is the latency. So you can see with GPT-40, and the accuracy with the standard um, prompt was 53%. With chain of thought, it's 95 And with chain of draft, it's 91 so slightly less. But on the other hand, you can see that the amount of tokens is 20% uh, of the 25%, or between 20 to 25% of the tokens generated for GPT-40. And the latency in the chain of draft um, is 25% 
or you can say that the um, chain of thought took four times slower than the chain of draft. Now in close sonnet, we see um, even bigger differences in terms of tokens, tokens used, and not as big of a difference in the latency. But in terms of accuracy, again, chain of thought yields better results, but the chain of draft is almost there, way better than, than the standard. And um, the latency and the token output is, is uh, required is significantly smaller than chain of thought. Now, let's see in some common sense reasoning tests. You can see over here, again, the chain of drafts yield um, almost a similar result as chain of thought. With closed uh, sonnet 3.5, it's actually produced better results than in the chain of thought. And as you can see here, the amount of tokens required is significantly less than the amount of tokens required in the chain of thought. And in terms of latency, it's, it almost cut, uh, cuts the time in half. Over here, it's almost similar. But again, uh, depending on the different use case. But in general, you can see that the chain of thought produce really accurate results. And obviously, and along the board, it, it used less uh, tokens and the latency was faster. Now, this is um, especially important when you're trying to optimize for speed or for cost. And this is another um, different uh, use case. So symbolic reasoning over here. And as you can see, understand, exposed understanding evaluation results. So you can see here that the chain of drafts actually yielded even better results than the chain of thought while keeping the tokens um, count smaller and la the latency also uh, shorter. And this is another benchmark. I'm not going to cover each benchmark, but as you can see, um, in different benchmarks, the chain of draft yields different results, sometimes even better than the chain of thought, but always the tokens and the latency are way better. Now, there are some limitations when it comes to using chain of draft. So they notice that when using uh, smaller models, they don't work as, as well. And there is a, they notice also inconsistencies uh, without few short examples. So the chain of draft seems to be uh, needing a few short examples. And obviously it, it's probably, uh, I cannot say obviously it probably, but it seems like it should work with um, frontier models and not uh, small models. Now, this is very interesting, um, especially if you're building automations that um, you have many moving parts and you want to start optimizing for latency and for cost. In general, I like this uh, approach because, first of all, it takes, um, it takes the process of how our, our brain works, like as I said, in, in outlines and in drafting, and it mimics that process and implements it in, in the process of uh, using AI. I never thought about like the idea of the fact that, that we think in outlines. So when I first encountered the chain of thought, I thought, okay, this looks very na natural and it makes a lot of sense. It's like what we are doing. But when I was introduced to this research paper, I actually thought this is brilliant. I'm, I actually think not, I, I do break down problems step by step. But whenever I break it down, I break it down to like like what they are doing here in the chain of draft, like five five words max, because I only have like the outline, the skeleton of uh, my chain of thought. So this is very interesting. Uh, I loved the innovation, and I think this could be uh, very useful and definitely something that I'm going to mess around with. So this is why I wanted to share this very short video about this research paper with you guys. Obviously, hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to leave the link to the research paper in the video description. If you have any questions, any feedback, please feel free to share. In the meantime, I invite you to subscribe to the channel and also check out my um, newsletter, which is called No Fluff at nofluff.online. It's about AI agents, uh, automations, and data-driven marketing and leveraging of AI agents. I'm sure that if you're watching this video and enjoy this video, you will also find the newsletter interesting. That's pretty much it. Until next time, guys, keep on automating.